What's up everyone, I'm MTS aka Mel the Scientist and today I'm going to finally be getting a look into string theory. My degree is in biology p medicine so I wasn't able to get those more advanced topics of physics like string theory and Schrodinger's cat and things like that. Um, but I've always wanted to learn about them and know about them and as a fan of the Big Bang Theory I was always hearing these um, concepts. From what I have researched about it, it proposes that the particles that make up the universe are actually composed of one-dimensional strings. But that's all that I know about it so far. I can't wait to be enlightened by this 8 minute video and see if I can come up with a better understanding and then use that as a stepping stone to do further research and understand it a bit more. So let's jump into it. What is the true nature of the universe? To answer this question, humans come up with stories to describe the world. We test our stories and learn what to keep and what to throw away. But the more we learn, the more complicated and weird our stories become. Some of them so much so that it's really hard to know what they're actually about. Like string theory, a famous, controversial and often misunderstood story about the nature of everything. I've heard. Why did we come up with it? And is it correct or just an idea we should chuck out? To understand the true nature of reality, we looked at things up close and were amazed. Wondrous landscapes in the dust, zoos of bizarre creatures, complex protein robots, all of them made from structures of molecules made up of countless, even smaller things, atoms. Mm -hmm. We thought they were the final layer of reality until we smashed them together really hard and discovered things that can't be divided anymore, elementary particles. But now we had a problem. They're so small that we could no longer look at them. Think about it. What is seeing? To see something, we need light, an electromagnetic wave. This wave mm -hmm. hits the surface of the thing and gets reflected back from it into your eye. The wave carries information from the object that your brain uses to create an image. Mm -hmm. So you can't see something without somehow interacting with it. Seeing is touching, an active process not yeah, that is, that is true, when you think about it. Not a passive one. This is not a problem with most things. But particles are very, very, very small. So small that the electromagnetic waves we use to see are too big to touch them. Visible mm -hmm. light just passes over them. Mm -hmm. We can try to solve this by creating electromagnetic waves with more and much smaller wavelengths. But in quantum physics, shorter wavelengths means more energy. So yes. when we touch a particle with a wave that has a lot of energy, it gets a kick. By looking at a particle, we change it. In quantum physics, we cannot know where a particle is and where it's going with absolute precision. This fact is so important that it has a name. The Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle, the basis of all quantum physics. I think I've heard physics. of it. So what does a particle look like then? What is its nature? We don't know. If we look really hard, we can see a blurry sphere of influence, but not the particles themselves. Mm -hmm. We just know they exist. But if that's the case, how can we do any science with them? We did what humans do and invented a new story, a mathematical fiction. The story of the point particle. We decided that we would pretend that a particle is a point in space. That's Any true. An electron is a point with a certain electric charge and a certain mass, all indistinguishable from each other. This way, physicists could define them and calculate all of their interactions. This can be made precise in quantum field theory, and this solved a lot of problems. All of the standard model of particle physics is built on it, and it predicts lots of things very well. Some quantum properties of the electron, for example, have been tested and are accurate up to 0.0000000000002%. Okay. So while particles are not really points, by treating them as if they were, we get a pretty good picture of the universe. Mm -hmm. Not only did this idea advance science, it also led to a lot of real-world technology we use every day. But there's a huge problem, gravity. In quantum mechanics, all physical forces are carried by certain particles. 
But according to Einstein's general relativity, gravity is not a force like the others in the universe. If the universe is a play, particles are the actors, but gravity is the stage. Mm. To put it simply, mm. Wow, what an analogy. That's pretty deep. Gravity is a theory of geometry, the geometry of space-time itself, of distances which we need to describe with absolute precision. But since there is no way to precisely measure things in the quantum world, our story of gravity doesn't work with our story of quantum physics. When physicists tried to add gravity to the story by inventing a new particle, their mathematics broke down. And this is a big problem. If we could marry gravity to quantum physics and the standard model, we would have the theory of everything. So very smart people came up with a new story. They asked, what is more complex than a point? A line That's or true. a string? String theory was born. What makes string theory so elegant is that it describes many different elementary particles as different modes of vibration of the string. Just like a violin string vibrating differently can give you a lot of different notes, a string can give you different particles. Most importantly, this includes gravity. I see where that's going, but let's, let's um, look further. String theory promised to unify all fundamental forces of the universe. This caused enormous excitement and hype. String theory quickly graduated to a possible theory of everything. Unfortunately, string theory comes with a lot of strings attached. <laughs> Much of the maths involving a consistent string theory does not work in our universe with its three spatial and one temporal dimensions. String theory requires ten dimensions to work out. So string theorists did calculations in model universes and then try to get rid of the six additional dimensions and describe our own universe. But so far, nobody has succeeded and no prediction of string theory has <laughs> How's been proven in an experiment. <laughs> this whole scene right here is just college in general. <laughs> so string theory did not reveal the nature of our universe. One could argue that in this case... Can you look at his watch like, um, I need you to leave now? <laughs> so string theory really isn't useful at all. Science is all about experiments and predictions. If we can't do those, why should we bother with strings? It really is all about how we use it. Physics is based on maths. Two plus two makes four. This is true no matter how you feel about it. And the maths in string theory does work out. That's why string theory is still useful. Mm. Imagine that you want to build a cruise ship, but you only have blueprints for a small rowing boat. There are plenty of differences, the engine, the materials, the scale. But both things are fundamentally the same, things that float. So by studying the rowing boat blueprints, you might still learn something about how to build a cruise ship eventually. With that, I don't think that's a wrong assumption. Even though the scale is quite different and you'd be using different materials, I could, you could argue it is the same principle. What makes a rowboat float mm. <laughs> and what makes a cruise ship float i don't know much about engineering and mechanics but i don't think that's far off string theory we can try to answer some questions about quantum gravity that have been puzzling physicists for decades quantum gravity. such as how black holes work or the information paradox. Oh, okay string theory may point us in the right direction when used in this spirit, string theory becomes a precious tool for theoretical physicists and help them discover new aspects of the quantum world and some beautiful mathematics. So maybe the story of string theory is not the theory of everything. But just like the story of the point particle, it may be an extremely useful story. We don't yet know what the true nature of reality is, but we'll keep coming up with stories to try and find out until one day, hopefully, we do know. They pretty much explained it as just another way to possibly look at the universe. Another way to look at the universe. So someone in the comments uh, says, for those of you still confused, here's a first grade breakdown of string theory and what we said in the video. Once upon a time, we thought the smallest, most fundamental thing that makes up everything was the atom. Now we know that you can get smaller and more fundamental, if you will, than that. Okay. 
It turns out that the atom is made up of three particles, proton, neutron, and electron, yes. For a while, we thought that it was as small as you could go. But we now know that the proton and neutron are made up of smaller particles called quarks. So now we ask ourselves, what is more fundamental than a quark? What is smaller? In other words, what makes a quark? It is another particle is it another particle that's even smaller? We don't know. This is where string theory comes in. Ah, okay. String theory suggests that it does get smaller. The teeniest, most fundamental building blocks of matter in the universe are tiny strings, little filaments of energy that vibrate and dance around. Yeah, I got the, the string reference. Oh, I got the violin string reference. And every fundamental sub- atomic particle is made by the vibrating strings right because he said that each string each vibration of the string can get you different particles i think they said if a string vibrates this way then an electron is made if it vibrates another way then a quark is made if it vibrates another way then a neutrino pops out and so on and so on okay i definitely get that it also turns out that the math behind string theory tells us that our universe has 11 dimensions instead of the four that we know 10 spatial dimensions and one temporal dimension, aka time. Keep in mind, when string theory was first proposed, scientists were watering at the mouth, but even to this day, there is no real proof or evidence that these strings exist, and because of that, string theory is kind of becoming a joke. Um, day by day, it's taken less seriously than before, and a lot of physicists essentially get told to move on and forget it. Oh, well, I mean, as a scientist, as a fellow scientist, I wouldn't want anyone to tell me that. Yeah, well, thank you to Sinbad for that clarification of the video. I do get the fundamental concept of it. I'm going to leave the math portion of string theory to the physicists and, and carry on with my profession in biology and biotech. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, who am I kidding? One video isn't going to solve, one video isn't going to help you truly understand it. That takes years of, of study that many physicists have dedicated there time and energy towards so this did give me some enlightenment so i hope to be able to continue to understand it when i have free time uh, look more into it and other concepts that i might be confused about so thank you so much for watching please don't forget to like share subscribe and i will see you in the next video peace out